the world's richest companies, are desperately trying to solve the biggest bottleneck in artificial intelligence. But so far, every solution depends on a special type of chip made from the second hardest material known to man. And NVIDIA is betting their entire future on the one company that solved AI's power problem. Gallium nitride, silicon carbide. How is it going to change the world of data centers? Good question. Well, data centers are completely changing the world as we know it. It used to be data centers required just a few hundred watts per processor or 10 to 20,000 watts in a server rack. That's the building block of a data center. AI is changing that completely. We're now talking about hundreds of thousands of watts and in the future, a megawatt per server rack. How are we going to deliver that kind of power? Silicon chips just can't do it. They run out of steam. Gallium nitride and silicon carbide can offer up to 10 to 20 times more power and do it more energy efficiently with faster charging, faster power. These are the key technology chips to power the future data center. In a previous video, I talked about how NVIDIA became the world's most valuable company by controlling 92% of AI chips. Their H100 GPUs power every major AI system, from ChatGPT to Google's Gemini, Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, they're all spending billions to get their hands on NVIDIA's chips. In other words, NVIDIA makes artificial intelligence possible. But here's what most people don't realize. NVIDIA's chips are hitting a wall. A single rack of their new Blackwell GPUs consumes 120 kilowatts, enough electricity to power 100 homes. Data centers are literally running out of power. So the way to think about AI inference is a little bit like electricity, right? You plug your appliance into the wall and you get electricity and you don't think about it too much. The AI boom has taken off at a awkward time for the fight against climate change um, because global temperatures are already rising much faster than scientists expected and now AI and um, the International Energy Agency has said is contributing to a massive increase in power demand. Microsoft is restarting nuclear reactors. Google is building its own power plants. And it's true, NVIDIA cannot solve this crisis without silicon carbide chips from a company in Torrance, California called Novitas Semiconductor. Novitas's chips can handle 10 times more power than regular silicon, while losing 90% less energy as heat, making them the key to keeping AI's exponential growth from grinding to a halt. Silicon carbide semiconductors are made from the second hardest synthetic substance in the world, a crystal that combines silicon and carbon atoms. But unlike regular silicon that melts at a little over 1400 degrees Celsius, silicon carbide sublimes directly from solid to gas at 2700 degrees. And this is why companies like TSMC and ASML aren't part of this story. It's because ASML's $150 million lithography machines are designed for regular silicon wafers. But silicon carbide requires completely different equipment, specialized crystal growth furnaces, diamond cutting tools, and ion implantation systems that can handle temperatures that would destroy conventional semiconductor equipment. For example, one silicon carbide wafer takes seven to 10 days to grow, advancing just a few millimeters per hour. And the crystals themselves are so hard that they can only be cut with synthetic diamonds. But that's what makes sick chips so revolutionary for AI. It's because this long and tedious process produces a chip that has a band gap three times wider than regular silicon. Think of the band gap of a chip like a buffer zone that keeps energy under control. So the wider the buffer, the more heat and voltage the chip can handle before failing. For example, silicon carbide can operate at at 600 degrees Celsius, which is four times hotter than regular silicon's 150 degree limit. It can handle voltages that are 10 times higher, and it conducts heat three times better, eliminating the need for massive cooling systems, which is going to be a massive cost savings for some of NVIDIA's biggest customers. Because over the past year, the hyperscalers have been investing billions into temporary solutions that will help with the heat and energy problem of their data centers, leading to dozens of companies who sold them those solutions market caps to skyrocket overnight. But all of these companies are really just the band-aid to the cure that is sick chips, which is why in May of 2025, NVIDIA selected Navitas to support their vision for next generation 800 volt data centers, an announcement that completely shook the entire AI industry. Because Navitas is just a small company located in Torrance, California right outside of San Diego with less than a few hundred employees. And to make it more shocking, Navitas is a fabulous semiconductor company. This means that they simply design the SIC chips and don't manufacture them. And therein lies the problem because Navitas's deal with NVIDIA isn't exactly ironclad. So that means that they need to find manufacturing partners who can actually produce these revolutionary chips at the scale and quality that NVIDIA demands. And the list of manufacturing companies with this capability is shockingly small. ST Microelectronics and Infineon from Germany have the technology. So do 
American companies like Wolfspeed and On Semiconductor. China's Sun is trying to catch up. And then there's the dark horse, Taiwan's PSMC, which recently announced an 8-inch silicon carbide production line. But the CEO of Navitas, Gene Sheridan, is taking a page out of NVIDIA's book, and he's betting everything on this AI partnership. He co-founded Navitas after spending 25 years at International Rectifier, where he saw the limitations of traditional silicon firsthand. In their latest earnings call, Sheridan made a stunning admission. They're actually walking away from their profitable mobile chip business to go all in on AI data centers. And that revenue dropped from $14.5 million to $10 million in a single quarter as they transitioned. But Sheridan believes this sacrifice is worth it. Why? Because the opportunity is massive. Navitas estimates the AI data center power semiconductor market will reach $2.6 billion per year by 2030. And they're positioning themselves to capture a huge chunk of it. They've already raised $97 million in fresh capital and are developing three different types of silicon carbide chips for NVIDIA's 800 volt systems. The first is their ultra high voltage chips that interface with the power grid at 10,000 volts. Then there are the converters that step down to 48 volts and the final stage that powers the AI processors themselves. The first engineering samples ship to customers by the end of 2025. Mass production is expected to begin in late 2026. And by 2027, Sheridan expects this bet to pay off in a big way. Gene, your company's stock's been on a wild ride, hasn't it? Since the, the, the announcement of the deal, largely by association, probably, right? With the name NVIDIA. But can you give us something tangible? Like what's the dollar value of this relationship? to Navitas, what's the sort of sales growth trajectory just from the agreement you've put in place with NVIDIA? Well, we're already shipping our high voltage GAN chips and silicon carbide chips into data centers today. We about, have about 70 opportunities in the AC to DC converter for the traditional data center of today. That's already grown and that's gonna drive some short-term growth for the company. But this announcement is really about tomorrow. We're gonna spend the next year in development with NVIDIA and others creating the key technology or building blocks for this 800 volt data center, this megawatt server rack power. These systems won't come online until maybe late 26 and really be ramping in 27. So it's not a short term play, but we do have solid business in the near term that has us already engaged with NVIDIA and others. Um, and we're really excited about making this next generation data center happen over the next 12 to 18 months. You said at the top of the show that you've added almost $1 billion of market cap in the last seven trading sessions, and the company's values tripled. As its CEO, what's that like for you? Well, I, I've, we went public a few years ago. Uh, as an early stage public company, um, I've learned uh, to ride the highs and the lows uh, and not get too excited about either, <laughs> either extreme. So I think the market's gonna do what it's gonna do. But, uh, but we keep our heads down, focusing on building a great next generation power semiconductor business. If we can keep partnering with companies like NVIDIA in key segments, data center is a top one for us. We're also working on mobile chargers. We're also working on electric vehicles, changing solar inverters, uh, partnering up with some of these key guys. That's what gets me excited. That's what's gonna drive our business. And we're super excited about the NVIDIA one to really create these future data centers. But Antas isn't the only player in this game. The competition is fierce. Companies like Wolfspeed have been designing and manufacturing silicon carbide chips since 2010. Other companies like Infineon, Rome, and MicroSemi are all fighting for position. The difference? Navitas claims their chips achieve 40% better efficiency than competitors. And they're the only company offering the full range of technologies NVIDIA needs, from ultra-high voltage silicon carbide to mid-voltage gallium nitride. So here's what NVIDIA's big bet on Navitas means for the future of AI. Without silicon carbide, data centers would need 16 times more power infrastructure. The cooling requirements alone would make large-scale AI impossible. Microsoft, Google, and Amazon are literally restarting nuclear power plants because they can't get enough electricity. But with Navitas's technology, a data center that today requires an entire power plant could run on a fraction of that energy. The irony? While everyone's focused on NVIDIA's GPUs as the bottleneck for AI, the real bottleneck might be these tiny silicon carbide chips from a company most people have never heard of. Because without them, all those billions being invested in AI infrastructure hit a wall. A power wall that only silicon carbide can break through. And that's why NVIDIA, a company worth over $3 trillion, is betting their future on a semiconductor company from Torrance, California, with just 200 employees. Because sometimes, the biggest revolutions come from the smallest components. And in the race to build artificial general intelligence, the winner might not be who has the most powerful processors, but who can actually power them. All right, look, so before the comment section tears me to shreds, I have to add this part. So I wrote this entire script a week before Navitas dropped a bombshell announcement. 
because on August 25th, 2025, Gene Sheridan, the CEO who bet everything on NVIDIA, stepped down. So after 11 years building Navitus from a parking lot trailer into AI's most critical power company, he's officially out. His replacement, Chris Alexander, the guy who just led Renesis's $2.5 billion power division and orchestrated their acquisition of GAN competitor Transform. As Sheridan himself wrote on LinkedIn, each stage of a company's evolution requires different skills and experiences. So I want you to think about what this means. Sheridan took the ultimate founder's risk. He decided to walk away from Navitus's most profitable sector, mobile chips, all to chase AI's power revolution. And then he landed the world's biggest whale in the AI space, NVIDIA. He positioned Navitus at the center of the trillion dollar AI infrastructure boom. But then, right before the payoff, he hands the keys to someone else. Why? Well, because technically Navitus isn't a startup anymore. They're about to scale from hundreds of chips sold to millions. As board chairman Richard Hendricks said, they need someone who can deliver sustainable and profitable growth and operational excellence. Translation, they need someone who's done this before, which if we're being honest, Gene hasn't. But this leadership change isn't a story about failure. It's about evolution. Because Sheridan built a rocket, but now Alexander has to fly it. So the only question left is, can a fabulous semiconductor company with 200 employees really become the backbone of AI's power infrastructure? And can they find a manufacturing partner fast enough that can allow them to scale and meet NVIDIA's demands? Only time will tell. But one thing's certain, the AI revolution depends on it.